Good morning, Cleveland County. We're out here up near Falston, up Highway 18, for our February session of the Cleveland County Kitchen. And I'm here today with Dennis. And if you will please introduce your family, Dennis. This is my father, uh, William, or Dub, and my mother, Sue. And they raise Charlotte cattle. Um, and you want to just tell a little bit about how the raising the process is? Well, uh, well first of all, uh, we, we're, we've been here for five generations here in Falston. And for the last 40 years, my father and I have raised purebred Charlotte cattle. The first, uh, most of those years has prim been primarily to sell breeding stock. But in the past three years, we've been selling local beef. Okay, we're going to pull down here and unroll this round bell of hay for these. Uh, we've got 24 head in here. Uh, majority of them will be steers that will uh, be continued to grow out to for the farmers market and our local beef sales. Also have uh, seven heifers in here that's a, got a young bull with them, and we're breeding those now. And they'll go back into the herd as mama cows. Ready? Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. Come out! Come out! Dennis, um, these are a, a particular breed of cow. Do uh, you want to talk about their breed and, and how, why they make such good meat? Well, uh, Charlais came to the United States in the 1940s from France. And uh, they were brought over here because they were a growthy breed that, that was leaner than the uh, British breeds we currently have the, had then, the Angus, Hereford, and Shorthorn. And so basically the Charlais are just growthier and uh, produce a leaner product. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was something that uh, was in demand. Well, Dennis, um, you know, we've seen them on the hoof. We've seen them eating. And then, of course, the process to get a piece of meat is you're going to have to have them killed. And of course, we call that processing. Yeah. Uh, and do you want to explain how you have that done? Yeah. Uh, in order to in order to sell beef locally, I have to have a, a meat handler's license. So I'm I've been certified by the North Carolina Department of Agriculture. But to to but also we have to have a processing plant do the work, and we go to Mays Meat in Taylorsville, and and the meat is uh, inspected by the USDA and. And it's it's uh, aged for 14 days, okay. dry aged for 14 days, okay. and then they do the cutting and, and wrapping and and put it in vacuum sealed uh, packages with our label on it and the USDA approval on that on that label. Mm -hmm. And then does it, they freeze it as well. Is that they, correct? They freeze it right after they package it, and it comes back to our farm already frozen, mm -hmm. and then we sell it as a frozen product. And believe it or not, in the barber shop, they have a big freezer. So all you have to do is come in the door and you can, there's quite a selection in the freezer of what any type of beef product you want. Dennis Martin and his dad have been so gracious to show us these cattle. And uh, if you like a hamburger, it's the best kind of meat. When we first started off, I said, well, who's going to really see this? It is amazing how many people will stop and talk about it. Some fella hollered out political smackdown in Orlando, Florida. There's just really no other outlet for local politics. You need somebody that's been around the block, that knows most of the players, and has some experience at it. Um, and I think that's why people like political smackdown. And we all don't agree with one another, and that's okay too. Hi, I'm Steve Putnam, and I'd like to invite you to join me for the next Talk of the Town. Each week I get to meet with some of the most interesting people in Cleveland County. And each show is packed with information you need to know to stay connected to our community. From promoting upcoming events to discussing local subjects that impact you, Talk of the Town has a little something for everyone. Plus, we're on every day, so it's easy to catch up with us. That's Talk of the Town. Every day, every week, right here on C19 TV, Cleveland County's channel. Only on Time Warner Cable. Welcome back, Cleveland County. We're here in the recording studios of Cleveland Community College, and we've 
want to thank the college for allowing us to be able to bring this program to you. This is a good opportunity to do that. We're in the studio with Nancy Abasi-Akong, who is the Family and Consumer Sciences Extension Agent for Cleveland County. Mm -hmm. And Nancy is our expert with nutrition of the foods that we are going to be showing and cooking in the kitchen. And Nancy, we're highlighting beef this month for the month of February. Yes. And can you start just talking about some of the good aspects of eating beef? Okay. Well, it's a good time to feature beef uh, at, so that um, we can think in terms of when our gardens are, are not producing, uh, although we know that farmers are working and getting ready. But when we think about beef, that's, of course, in the protein group. And when we look at the dietary guidelines, we're still using the 2010 dietary guidelines from USDA. Protein, um, the recommended amount of protein for adults is about five and a half ounces a day. Mm -hmm. um, and we can have protein in each of the three meals, if we're on that pattern, three meals a day, then a quarter of the plate would be protein and a very good protein choice would be beef, mm -hmm. among other options that you would have. But if you are selecting beef, the key message is to make it lean, to make it a lean choice. And of course, there are lots of different um, cuts as well as um, cooking methods mm -hmm. that we have as options for using beef. Certainly. Well, I know in the kitchen we'll be cooking a chuck roast and a mm -hmm. London broil. And both mm -hmm. of those are relatively inexpensive. Mm -hmm. uh, they may be a tougher, I, I guess you could say a tougher cut of cuts of meat, but I think there are some ways that we can make it easier to eat, but still be able to stay in some sort of a budget for beef. Right, uh, yes, and when you are shopping, and don't hesitate to talk to the butcher oh, uh, to idea. ask about cuts of meat or ways to prepare, especially if you are considering some of the uh, less tender cuts, mm -hmm. like uh, the London broil, which would be part of the round. Uh, the chuck, of course, is up on the shoulder area. Uh, it is l more tender than the round, but it is not as tender, of course, as your tenderloin and often using moist heat uh, is how you will want to tenderize some of those cuts that um, if you prepared them um, just with searing or just with grilling, they would be more tent, they would be tough to eat. Correct. So we can either marinate a, a less tender cut mm -hmm. and that gives the muscle time to break down and tenderize or we can cook it long and slow, for example, in a crock pot, mm -hmm. um, that would be, or braising or baking it in the oven, again, with some moist heat, with mm -hmm. some um, uh, broth or something. We're now dealing with meats, and so we really need to be able to know how to handle meats because there mm -hmm. are ba all sorts of bacteria, E. coli that we've heard of. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, at the farmer's market, will be buying our meat probably frozen, correct? That's correct. And I know at Dennis Martin's, uh, at the barber shop, mm -hmm. you can go in and buy your meat. I think it's shrink wrapped and right. frozen out of the barber shop. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah, so if you'll please address some of our safety precautions. Okay, uh, you, are, you always want to buy your meats refrigerated at least. Uh, and these at the farmer's market, at the barber shop there mm -hmm. uh, at Martin's Farm, those will be frozen and they are vacuum packed. Okay. The color there will be, um, could be kind of a maroon color because you don't have the presence of oxygen okay. to make the meat red uh, or to okay. when oxygen is present, um, then it would be a more red color. Uh -huh. So if you're at the grocery store and it's just packaged in just the regular plastic wrap, look for your more red colors, uh, whether it's ground beef or 
um, a roast or eye round or whatever it happens to be, mm -hmm. color. Then because of food safety and we don't want to cross contaminate, we know that we there could be some liquid that might have seeped out of the package that could be on the packaging or mm -hmm. as you're turning it up and down, it may drip out. Mm -hmm. So immediately put it in, put that package in a plastic bag. All right, well, Nancy, thank you so much. We've run, we've run out of time, uh, but I do want to uh, remind our viewers that uh, www.clevelandcountykitchen.org has not only uh, this, the, uh, this whole half hour video, but it also has Nancy's recipes and the chef's recipes and a nutritional newsletter. Mm -hmm. So you get a lot mm -hmm. for a little half an hour video. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next segment where we will be cooking our meat. Cleveland County. My name is Deborah Blanton and I am here today with Chef Adam Smith. We are in the kitchen of the Neal Senior Center today and Adam is the chef for the Neal Senior Center's kitchen and the good lunches that they serve to the public. Yes, ma'am. So we'll talk about that as we go through chopping up our vegetables, Adam. All right. What we're working with today is a... A London broil, which is another uh, less expensive piece of meat. Yes, and um, what we're focusing on today with the London broil is we're going to make a marinade. Mm -hmm. um, a marinade is, it's important for a cheaper cut of meat. What it does is it gets into the meat and tenderizes it because your cheaper cuts of meat, you can see on the London broil there's no marbling of fat. Uh -huh. So that's what makes it tough. The fat is what tenderizes the meat. Okay. So it needs a little help to be tender. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start working on a, a marinade. Um, this is a little more in depth um, of a recipe, but again, it's easy. Anybody can do it. Okay. Let me move the one yeah. out of the way. Okay. Yeah. What we got now. Um, I've got two shallots. The recipe says about half a cup. And I, use, I figure about two would be about half a cup. It's not an exact science. You don't have to, you don't really have to measure it. But um, if you want to, you certainly can. Well, and, now, and, and a shallot is, it looks like an onion to me. It is a type of onion. Um, it's, not as, it's not as hot. It's oh. a little sweeter of an onion. Oh, OK. And it's more tender. OK. Um, so you're going to do the same with, like you did with the white onion. Get all the skin off of it. Okay. And if you like what I'm doing, you can certainly join us Monday through Thursday here at the Neal Senior oh, Center. Absolutely. Yes, and um, we are... Yeah, your hours are 11.30? To 1. To 1. Yes, ma'am, and we are open to the general public. Um, that's a, there's a common misconception that we're only open to seniors because we're a senior center. But we are open to anybody and everybody who likes good fellowship and good food. Mm -hmm. 
And actually, if groups wanted to meet here, we I'm do. sure you could put a couple tables together. Yes, and we also rent out our, our meeting rooms. So you can come up here and have your meeting and then um, join us for lunch as well. Okay. Oh, what a, yes. And Sharon Robs is our senior center director, and she would organize everything for you, and it would be set up waiting for you. Mm -hmm. um, she is the contact person for, for our uh, meeting rooms. Well, it's, it's good to be able to do this with you to let the public know that the Senior Center, as you just said, is not just for seniors only. That is correct. And everybody will be a senior eventually, so <laughs> they really need to come and see what it's all about. Yes, ma'am. And we do offer tours if you're curious as to what we do on a daily basis here at the Senior Center. Yeah. Um, and those tours, you can uh, come in and uh, any number of people, any number of our staff would be willing to give you a tour and explain what we do here, mm -hmm. if you were curious. So we are mincing our shallots, that, that is That is correct. correct. Yes, ma'am. Um, you want it to get a pretty fine mince on it. Because and you can certainly do any number of tricks that have been uh, foretold about keeping your eyes from watering while you're cutting onions. So these, these make your eyes water too. They do, um, unfortunately, but they are well, still, they taste sweeter and they impart a sweeter flavor. Okay, but they're still an onion. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now we got our shallots done. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need a quarter cup of soy sauce. Oops. The soy sauce is, um, you, I, I like to use the low sodium because I don't like to have a, a whole lot of salt where it's not necessary. Um, you know, this day and age, we're trying to focus on a healthy conscious, uh, you know, a healthy diet. Correct. Um, and plus, it'll be plenty salty enough. Um, yeah. All right, now I need three tablespoons of lemon juice. Okay. The lemon juice is the acid in your marinade. Every marinade has an acid. Um, it helps to break down the meat fibers and get really in there and tenderize your, your meat. Now, did you say three um, tablespoons? Yes, three tablespoons. Okay, I'm so we need, to, we, need to, <laughs> we need to do two more. I got more. carried away. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, there's your three there tablespoons. Okay. And then I need three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. Oh, right there it is. Okay. okay. I like to pour over the bowl just in case you spill or overfill. Mm -hmm, that's good. Okay. Because really, a little over won't make any difference. No, it won't. Uh, mm -hmm. And like you'll I just said, have you can, more liquid. If you don't like balsamic vinegar, you can use distilled vinegar. Okay. Um, but the balsamic vinegar has a richer flavor, and it's certainly going to be a better marinade. Right. Okay. Um, one and a half teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. One and a half. Now, <laughs> folks, all of these recipes are going to be on the Cooperative Extensions webpage. Um, so you'll be able, Adam shared with me before that he, you know, um, was, he just pours stuff in because <laughs> being a chef, he knows really how much a tablespoon is. But uh, for you viewers, we thought we would be very specific so you could actually see the utensils mm -hmm. that you use. Okay, so I, what, what I did was put one tablespoon of olive oil. Um, now I'm working on thyme. And that's T-Y-M-E. That is correct. Okay. Um, two teaspoons of thyme. You want to kind of go against the direction that the leaves are growing and get it off the stalks. Well, now that's, when I've used thyme, I've put stock and all in, but you're just taking the leaves off. That is correct. And oh, you can do oh. the stock and all, um, or you can certainly use the dry thyme. Um, but with, if you use the dry thyme, um, you need to double it. Okay, because, because it's not as flavorful as the regular leaves. That is correct. And um, 
what I'm going to do is... And again, this, this type of spice is up to the individual mm -hmm. taste. You could Certainly. Use, you could use rosemary. You can use well. oregano. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And I find that this recipe works good with basil as well. Oh, okay. And it works on not only London broil, you can actually do this for uh, steak if you, if you want to go for a higher cut of meat. But you won't need to marinate it quite as long. Oh, okay. Um, on a marinade, you typically at least, you want to have it in the, at the marinade at least an hour. Okay. But I like to do it longer. A lot of people don't. And by longer, are we talking again overnight? I, I do it overnight. Okay, okay. So if you have space in your refrigerator, that would be the best place to keep it and to let it soak in this liquid. That is correct in the refrigerator, but you want to, if you do refrigerate it, you want to pull it out of the refrigerator about an hour before you want to cook it because you oh, want it room okay. temperature. Oh, oh okay. It, okay. Will not, it will not sear well if you don't have the proper temperature. If it's too cold. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, now we've got dried oregano. We're going to do um, one teaspoon of dried oregano. Okay. Okay. That's good. And you can certainly use fresh garlic if you want. I find it's just much easier to buy it already minced at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But since it's already minced, the recipe calls for four cloves. Okay. A, a nice little trick is um, that one teaspoon is a clove. Oh. One teaspoon a, of, of minced garlic is a one clove. clove. That is correct. Okay. So one, two, three, and four. Okay. Okay, and you're going to want to salt and pepper to taste. want to whisk it because you put the olive oil in there and you want to make sure it's agitated enough to where it's all mixed well. Okay. And you have just made a marinade. Okay. So now what we have to do is oh, of a Ziploc bag. Will you hold that I'll be happy to do that. You're going to want to take your London broil. And put it down in your gallon size Ziploc bag. Oh, that's great. And then you take your oh, marinade. Hang on, good. Okay. And you just pour it in there. Okay. I always have to keep a rag with me when I'm cooking. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And you want to get all the air out of it. What did we do without Ziploc bags? I know. <laughs> and they tend to hold up pretty well, but I always like to set it in a baking dish or a, a plate oh, when I put it in the refrigerator. In case there's a leak. That is correct. You don't want to contaminate the other food with the beef blood. Right. Oh, yes, of course, because it will, I guess as the marinade sits, as it becomes tender, the juices of the meat will that start coming correct. out. That is correct. I just like to massage it a little bit, get it all around, mm -hmm. and then fold it over and just set it in the fridge just like this. Mm -hmm. And I, like I said, I like to marinate mine uh, overnight. Okay. Um, or you can do it, it's roughly estimate 12 hours. Okay. And you want to turn it over halfway through to make sure the marinade, because the marinade is going to go sink down to, to the, the bottom. bottom. Certainly. So halfway through, you turn it over and. Okay. Then you have your marinated. Okay. Uh, um, your London marinated broil. London broil. London. I'm sorry. All right. And, and then after after your time of marinade, then what do you do with the piece of meat? After it's marinated, you want to pull it out of your bag, mm -hmm. and you discard the marinade. But you want to make sure you rub all the garlic and shallots off of the meat. Okay. Wipe it clean. Wipe it clean, words. and okay. then you want to dab it with paper towels. Okay. Um, the reason for that is the garlic gets very bitter if it's burned. Oh. Okay. Um, so after you've wiped it and patted it with paper towels, mm -hmm. you're going to take it in a dry skillet. Okay. And just like this one over oh, here. Oh, okay. And you're going to um, like this right just here. like this right mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. 
And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your meat on a dry skillet on high heat. Turn okay. your turn your eye on high. Okay. And you're going to sear it. And what that does is it keeps all the juice in the meat. Okay. So you sear it on all four sides. Um, okay. I use tongs, it gets very hot. Oh, that's a great you're gonna, idea. You're gonna get worried that you're burning it. Right. Don't worry, you're not burning it. Okay. So you're gonna do four minutes on each side. Okay. And then you're gonna take it out of the pan. Okay. And put it on a broiling pan. Okay. And put it in your oven un under the broiler, okay. about four inches from the broiler. All right. And cook it till, till it's your temperature that you like. I like mine medium. Right. Um, and a good way to know what temperature it is, and this is a trick I learned when I was in college. You want, if you want it well done, just touch right here. That's how the meat would feel if it's well done. Oh. If you want it medium, touch right here. That's medium. Okay. And if you want it rare, that's right rare. To feel. Oh, that's to get to, to get the pressure. I mean, the to, the, the different texture. densities. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Okay. So that's a good way to to check your doneness if you don't oh. want to poke it with a thermometer. What a great what a great rule of thumb. That's wonderful. All right. All right. Well, I, now we do have a finished product. That is correct. Here is a nice marinated London broil. Mm -hmm. And I would say, is that? Mm, medium, medium rare. rare. That's medium, medium rare. rare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you're done cooking it, you want to let it rest for 10 to 15 minutes before you slice it. Okay. Otherwise, all the juice is going to come out of it. What a great, another good rule of thumb. And you've done a little garnish here with Yeah, some just a little parsley. Oregano. Oh, a little parsley. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. You eat with your eyes before you eat with your mouth. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, Thank you for visiting us today. Uh, we've enjoyed certainly being here at the Neal Senior Center. Come where join again, us. again, we have lunch three, four times a week. Monday through Thursday, 1130 to 1. Uh -huh. Thank you for watching Cleveland County. Uh, we will be doing, bringing you another vegetable in the month of March. So stay tuned. And thank you, Adam, again for performing for no us. No problem. <laughs>